LifeServe Pharmacy is a healthcare provider for genuine medicine. Our main branch is located at Rubis Toll Station, Sabaki, Athi River on Mombasa Road. Our top value is convenient healthcare and dispensing quality prescriptions at the best value proposition. Our main attention spans around providing quality medicine and excellent services to our customers. We're giving 10% discounts on all supplements, hypertension and diabetic drugs. We also believe you shouldn't pay too much to stay healthy and that's why we'll match any advertised price on prescriptions and medicines. LifeServe Pharmacy is a healthcare provider with a human touch. And uh, good morning, welcome to New Day Kenya. This is the way to wake up in terms of the stories happening in the day and of course the developments over the weekend, including what transpired in regards to the political landscape with 13 months before the next general election in August 2022. Starting off with the hint by the former Prime Minister and the ODM Party Chief Raila Odinga, who said a political tsunami will be coming before the 2022 general election. And the handshake partner is a bit about the revival of the BBI law change, which he says will succeed. That is set to be kick-starting or kicking off tomorrow on Tuesday at the Court of Appeal after the proponents were displeased by the High Court ruling which termed the Building Bridges Initiative unconstitutional, null and void. The ODM leader also poked holes into the Deputy President William Ruto's bottom-up economic development mantra. Later we'll be talking about that. The Deputy President was also in the county of Machakos over the weekend. The Court of Appeal is set to hear the hearing of the Building Bridges Initiative BBI case as of Tuesday tomorrow. This week, with the proponents exuding confidence of the court shall overturn the decision by the High Court, which termed the BBI process unconstitutional, null and void. Deputy President William Ruto, on the other hand, has insisted the 2022 general election shall be held accordingly, accusing some leaders of scheming on how to call off the 2022 general election. Our political affairs reporter Jeff Haimba with more. A tough and a bracing legal battle looms on Tuesday this week as the BBI promoters exercises their muscles to face off with the anti-BBI legal team. The legal team drawn from President Huru Kenyatta, Opposition Chief Raila Odinga and the electoral body IBC will be going head on with the petitioners who won the first round after the High Court declared BBA process as illegal. Raila Odinga over the weekend exuded confidence. The seventh judge bench of the Court of Appeal shall overturn the High Court judgment as supported by the Westlands Member of Parliament, Timothy Wanyonye. That people are using only small uh, mistakes, maybe which are there, to throw away everything. We believe there's a lot of value, there's a lot of good thing in that uh, BBI. But if it looked at, if we looked at it without the eye of a political eye, we'll realize that uh, there's a lot of good things that will come out of it. According to Wanyonye, time is of essence urging the BBA proponents to allow some of the key amendments to be worked on by the parliament. Yeah, there are those things that we can leave out because the election is too close uh, and reviewing boundaries may, may call for even maybe a postponement of an election. That can be done even after election. It's not something that must be, do, must be done now. Uh, with the move to amend the constitution through a parliamentary initiative, which received a backing from the National Assembly Speaker Justin Muturi, uh, the proponents of the initiative described it as a win-win process uh, that will not divide the Kenyans through a highly charged referendum. Uh, BBA promoters are afraid uh, time might deal a huge blow to the process, with information having it that the calls to postpone uh, the 2022 general elections is around the corner. And uh, yes, Parliament can do a lot in the, on that BBI, and there's a lot we can do even without going to the referendum from the, from the BBI. There are only a few things that may require for us to go to the people, the BBI, so that... But Deputy President William Ruto has opposed any schemes to postpone the elections. He inchi mungu atatupatia viongozi 
watakaofuata kutoka hapa don't worry mtu asiwatie hofu god is in control we will have peaceful elections we will have a peaceful moment from now to 2022 mtu asiwatie hofu kwamba pengine kukawa kukaenda kukaharibika haiwezi kuharibika because we believe in god uh, Ruto who joined the faithful at the Bomani ASC charge in Machakos County uh, called on the leaders to shun divisive politics through forming tribal alliances and a lot will be expected from us so ni lazima tujipange na tuwe tayari kuwajibika i do not wish one day to engage myself in electing a president who is my brother if i know that brother of mine is not the right person for this country give kenya the best leaders to drive us forward in regardless to where we come from what tribe we are a group of the senators and the members of parliament had earlier plotted a parliamentary takeover of the constitutional review exercise and have the supreme law amended on clauses which do not require a referendum. This was before the court dealt a huge blow after it declared it as unconstitutional. A reporter for Ebro TV, I'm Jeff Haemba. And the Directorate of Criminal Investigation Detectives have arrested the main suspects behind the kidnapping and torture of Hafsa Mohamed Lukman, the Kamukunji-based businesswoman who was kidnapped on the 15th of June 2021. Undercover teams from the DCI Crime Research and Intelligence Bureau, backed up by their Special Service Unit counterparts, picked up the suspects as they slept at the Crystal View Lodge in the Kenangop area, the county of Nyandarwa. The two lovers, Jackson Jogu, aged 24, and Hafsa Abdi, aged 21, are believed to be the masterminds behind the kidnapping of Hafsa Lukman from her shop and managed to see for a total of 650000 from the victim's bank accounts while she was in captivity. <laughs> business shares since me nafanya kazi so mchana ali ni convince sami ni nikakubali yeye yeah, alikuwa anafanya biashara ya melon aliniambia unikopeshe nikipata faida tutagawa hiyo faida so mi mwenyewe nilikuwa na hamu ya business nikakubali mimi hata sijawahi ona faida yake akifanya mimi alikuwa tu ananiambia anafanya kazi so kila siku akinikuja akiniambia ongeza pesa alikuwa anakuja alikuwa anakuja excuse na, na excuse according to DCI undercover teams from the revived crime research and intelligence bureau at the crack of dawn sunday morning backed up by their special service unit counterparts picked njogu and hafsa as they slept at crystal view lodge in the chili kinangop area hafsa mohammed lukman the victim was found by detectives last Sunday at a dingy room in Matopeni area in Kayole where she had been forced to stay inside an empty water tank. So I mean, look on and pay to pesa, your pesa, I can fika 700. I can yam beer. To Nataka to Kutane now, even come back to Kutane, I can yam beer, Nitakupitia Kwa, Duka. Many Limuan beer to me, Nukujanam to Mginiam, Akakata. So tulikuwa tu tunapiga story. Yeye pia alikuwa ana chat. Kumbe alikuwa anamwaita hawa watu. So mimi nimeona watu wawili wakinishika tu shingo, kaanza kunichapa. Kulikuwa na soda stu kwa store. Kaniwaambia panua mdomo. Kaniweka hiyo soda, soda stu na vitamba. So from that wakanifunga funga macho, mkono na mguu. Kaniweka kwa mtungi the two kidnappers had demanded a ransom of five million in order to set Hafsa free. However, when the ransom wasn't delivered, they opted to flee from detectives who were closing in on them. 
The captors had sent a video to the family showing Hafsa badly injured on her face and her eyes covered by a piece of clothing. They sent at least three videos and messages to the family. I need justice. She was heard saying that the captors wanted money from the family as ransom before releasing her. Busara Naman for Ebru TV. And a family in Kabongo village in the county of Wasengeshu is mourning following the electrocution of their Tolofia old boy. Family members and locals struggled to come to terms with the demise of the standard six people who met his death while chopping off three branches in the county. The residents are now accusing the Kenya Power and Lighting Company, KPLC, for not clearing off the branches that were hanging on the power lines. Because they have been passing all around here, to clear meat. Why this one now? Because we can blame Kenya Power because we have been able to clear meat just previously. So we have been able to clear Uh, tumekuwa na uzuni na mshangao mkubwa kwa sababu ya ile jambo ambalo limetokea ni jambo ambalo limeshangaza kwa sababu mtoto huyu amepigwa akiwa juu ya miti na kitu ambacho ninaona ni kwamba tujui ni kwa nini mtoto alikuwa ameenda kukata sijui ni nani aliweza kwa nimpa ruhusa kwa sababu mtoto hangetoka tu kwao akuja akate miti penye hakuambiwa and so our prayer is that the power are going to compensate Uh, the family. The, the young boy was in class six, the age has been said, and therefore I'm calling upon Kenya Power just to ensure that uh, they do compensation and they ensure that they clear all the barriers next to the power line and across the country because I know Kenyans have been complaining. And religious leaders in Mbere in the county of Embu have called on the community to mentor youth in order to reduce cases of suicide and domestic violence. Bishop Moses Msamba has called on elders and councillors within the community to counsel the younger generation. He also called on politicians to be peaceful and distance themselves from divisive politics ahead of the general election in 2022. Ilikuwa siku ya ya kukumbuka mambo ya alusi, mambo ya familia na mambo ya hunduma ya wase akina mama. Na tukahimiza ni vizuri watu wachunga bama zao aruzi sawa familia zao kwa sababu ni Mungu aliangiza mambo ya familia tunajua kuna changamoto mingi pale na pale ambazo zinaleta domestic violence watu kufanyana mambaya lakini tukaomba kila mtu alete mambo ya heshima kwa mwingine na pia tuangalie watoto mentorship boy child ngao child na pia wakina wazao angalie makina mama wa mama angalie wase heshima nyumbani na tunashauri kwa sababu kuna changamoto mingi na vitisho katika maisha ni vizuri akiwa huko na shinda yoyote ila wewe ni mtoto ama mwanalika ama pale nyumbani ni vizuri kuwa tunaongea mashida zetu usinyamaze na tuwe tunaangalia hiyo ili tu, tuweze kuwa tuna watu wengi ambao wanajitoa uwai kwa sababu ya mashida ingine ambayo inazatatuliwa pale nyumbani kanisani na pia kwa watu ambao wamehimika kanzuri kuomba wale ambao pengine wale ni incumbents na wale watakuwa na aspire waendelee tu kupanga mipango mizuri wakiwa na heshima wananchi na wanaheshimu njia ya kuleta watu pamoja si kugawanya watu ama kuleta uandui waseme wa, wauze sera zao na mwishowe ikifika wakati yake next year 2022 kwa kwa mapenzi ya Mwenyezi Mungu yule atachaguliwa akubariki na endelee kuongoza inji, endelee kuongeza constituency and the commission on administrative justice has hinted at seeking advisory opinion from the supreme court of a ruling that declared recommendations of independent commissions as not binding to public bodies and government entities the body which is mandated to check on bad administration in the public sector stated that they have to get an understanding on the ruling since it touches on how many cases forwarded to them will be handled. Speaking in Nakuru over the weekend, during a stakeholders meeting on draft access to information, Commissioner Lusindungu said the discussions are towards on the redress of the matter. Popularly known as the Office of the Ombudsman, it is a constitutional commission established under Article 59.4 of the Constitution and the Commission on Administrative Justice Act 2011. Meanwhile, the Office of the Ombudsman is conducting public engagement in counties 
on the Access to Information Regulations 2021 that will ease the process of accessing information. Ndungu noted that the move is aimed at ensuring all stakeholders are involved through recommendations. The ruling from the Supreme Court did not just touch the Commission on Administrative Justice but all other independent commissions under Chapter 15. And because of that, uh, we all agreed that we will discuss or, and come up with the way that luring should be implemented and if need be, seek advisory opinion from the Supreme Court. That's where we are and we hope that we'll come up with a good decision which will serve the Kenyans. And for sure, we will implement the ruling always. She maintained that the office of the Ombudsman is independent and will continue to partner with other stakeholders in ensuring the constitution of Kenya is safeguarded. We were in Nandi County and the issue of child development, especially after the initiation process has taken place, did was raised uh, by the county commissioner that they have that lampet, lampet uh, uh, criminal activity and they are finding it very difficult to implement because they are children. Some of them are below 18, the girl is below 18, the boy is below 18. However, we say that we have the criminal department which is supposed to deal with the matter. CAJ officer in charge of North Rift region, Irene Nasserian, revealed that the majority of the complaints on their desk touch on delays in justice, provincial administration and chiefs who allegedly abuse their powers. The commission is currently now working with county commissioners to sensitize the chiefs on their role in society. My name is Irene Nasserian. I'm the officer in charge of the North Rift region. Common complaints that we receive is uh, delays and especially in uh, public institutions that of, offer services like land registries. So we have so many complaints touching on that. We also have uh, other uh, small issues that is touching on provincial administration and especially the ones at the ground and those are the chiefs. The commission has already held public engagement on the access to information regulations 2021 in Nyandarua, Nakuru, Nandi, Wajia, Garissa, Kitui, Makueni, Mombasa and Taitataveta counties with the second phase expected to be rolled out in the central region. And a batch of 31 boxes containing fake gold was seized by the, by the Directorate of Criminal Investigations at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. The consignment which was received from Uganda was concealed in a room belonging to Swiss Port Transit Freight Station. These uh, detectives say the multi-million shilling conspiracy is executed with the assistance and help of various government agencies in the country. A consignment of fake gold bars has been seized by detectives from a strong room belonging to Swiss Port Transit Freight Station at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. The fake gold bars concealed in 31 boxes received from Uganda have been stored at the airport by unscrupulous businessmen. According to the Directorate of Criminal Investigations, the traders settled on Swiss Port Freight since it provides ground and cargo handling services in major airports across the globe to store their fake consignments so as to avoid detection by detectives. In one such deal gone sour, a businessman lost over 34 million shillings to the con artists who immediately went underground after they received the payments. Detectives have been monitoring the criminals who have been acquiring posh premises in high-end estates, guarded round the clock by police officers. The investigators have uncovered that the multi-million shilling conspiracy is executed with the assistance of various agencies, including some government institutions. And we head to the county of Kisi where relatives of the elderly persons in the county have called upon the government to step in and cater for the National Hospital Insurance Fund, NHIF, for the aged in bid to ease their access to quality health care. Speaking separately from their homes in Kituto Central sub-county, they said access to essential health services free of charge will go a long way in preventing out-of-pocket expenses, which has proven to be expensive. Mwamogesa village in Kitutu Central sub-county, Judith Nyangate, a vegetable vendor, is tending to her 85-year-old mother. Judith says the biggest challenge she faces while taking care of her mother is when she falls sick and she is forced to pay for hospital bills. Kati ya kiwa mgonjwa, mimi uwa na shugulika vile ya naenda hospitali, 
angekuwa anapata hizo pesa za uzeeni at least zingekuwa zinamsaidia kidogo na zenye mimi natoanga hata kwa shamba kwa mboga hivi tukichanganya at least ye yeah, angekuwa anaenda hospitali vizuri According to Judith, most of her little earnings from her business is not sufficient to sustain her mother's well-being. Ukifika hospitali hakuna dawa. Tena unaambiwa aenda nje uende ununue dawa. Naona mama wangu amekaa na shida kubwa sana kulingana na miaka yake. Naona niko na shida na yeye. 10 kilometers away from Bauti village in the same sub-county, Robert Mayoro, a son to Mary Nyaboke, aged 83 years old, recounts how his mother was knocked down by a motorcycle and got admitted in Tenwek Hospital. Pigipigi zitoroka, lakini tulimuchukua hospitali. Tenwek tukambiwa kwamba tutoe diposi ya shiringi elfu miya moja, hakuwa na kadi ya hospitali. Tukatoa shiringi elfu miya moja, arafu, Mayoro says the hospital bill shot up and she was only released after the interventions of community members who donated towards offsetting the bill. We kimbili, tukambia tulibe shiringi elifu miambili, sarasi na sita. Atu kuwa nazo. Sasa, sita mbao tunayo, ama mama nayo sasa, ni NHF. Kama likuwa nayo, atu kiliba shiringi elifu miambili, sti na sita. Sasa tunaomba serikali isaidie wao mama ama wazee wale wa Kongwe awazi awazi kuchiweza kuchiribia NHF. He states that it is always costly to meet his mother's weekly regular checkups considering that she has not yet registered for NHIF. In the same sub-county at Kiongongi village, Kirigacha Orito, 87 years old, suffers from poor eyesight and an impaired hearing, decries exhaustion of the money he receives from Inua Jamii and is left with almost nothing to subscribe to NHIF. Niko na family, niko na wajuku, niko na mama mkongwe ambaye na ya hajiwezi. Tunatamba hapa, 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 inche. Atuna pesa ya ata ya kuenda kulipa kwa hospitali. Jared Ishmael, the chairperson of Mwamogesa Community Self-Help Group, appealed to the government to help in paying NHIF subscription fees to the elderly to enable them access health care facilities. So, when they come to the hospital, they come to the hospital, they come to the NHIF. So, this is like Kijiji, we have to pay for it, we have to pay for it, we have to pay for it, but we have to pay for it. So, we have to pay for it, we have to pay for it, we have to pay for it, Eh, kuna zile pesa wanapewa zile za uze, zile 2000. In fact hizo pesa zizi saidia wa mama na waze, hizo zinakuanga kidogo sana. Kitutu Central Sub-County Assistant County Commissioner MacDonald Kalama advised the elderly to make sure that they first pay their NHIF dues before spending the remainder of their money from their social net cash on other essentials. Pesa hii kuwa wanaipata baada ya edha mwezi ama miezi mbili tatu na inakuja kwa pamoja. So ile kitu yenye tungependa hasa kuwahimiza ni wahakikishe kuwa wanakata wanakata kadi hii ya NHIF. Mwanzo ile yenye NHIF wanatoa ile ya 6000 sita kwa mwaka mzima. Explain that for those who are 70 years and above and not enlisted in the safety net cash will be soon accommodated in it with the coverage set to be widened. And after a warm welcome in France and Germany, American Secretary of State Antony Blinken heads to Italy this week to meet with top Italian government officials and the Pope and to take part in the ministerial level meetings on Syria and defeating the Islamic State fighters and attending a G20 meeting. The Voice of America's diplomatic correspondent Cindy Sain reports from Paris. French leaders welcome Secretary of State Antony Blinken with open arms. Blinken spent much of his youth in Paris and speaks French fluently. Donc, uh, Anthony, welcome back. Foreign Minister Le Drian said everyone is glad America is back. 
Despite the bubbly receptions in Paris and Berlin, though, serious world problems caught up with Blinken, including a U.S. intelligence assessment suggesting that Kabul could fall within six months after U.S. and NATO forces depart Afghanistan on September 11th. But we're looking uh, very carefully at, um, at the situation on the ground in Afghanistan, uh, and we're also uh, looking very hard at uh, whether uh, the Taliban is at all uh, serious about a peaceful resolution uh, to the conflict. We continue to be engaged uh, on the diplomacy, uh, but uh, actions that would um, uh, try to take the, uh, the country by force are, of course, totally inconsistent with um, finding a peaceful uh, resolution. Blinken also met with French President Emmanuel Macron before departing Paris Sunday for Rome. He and Italian Foreign Minister Luigi Di Maio will co-chair a meeting of the Global Coalition to Defeat ISIS. Experts say the IS threat is acute in Afghanistan and parts of Africa. The threat has morphed and mutated and, and gone to, to new places, as, as you mentioned, in Africa, and that's going to be high on the agenda. And I think, again, the, the, the approach there is not simply just military. It's what could be done in a range of spheres, including helping people who are displaced by the conflict uh, conflicts in, in Africa, um, a, as well as sort of the ideological aspect of trying to defeat ISIS. The State Department says Syria remains a very big concern with tens of thousands of women and children in humanitarian camps, subject to security issues and ISIS efforts to exploit the camps to recruit the next generation of fighters. On Monday and Tuesday, Blinken will have an audience with the Pope at the Vatican and then visit the Italian cities of Bari and Matera for a G20 foreign minister's meeting. Cindy Sane, VOA News. Paris. And when we get back from the break, we talk to the former Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Farah Malim, and Professor Masharia Munene on the state of affairs in the country, including the weekend political developments across the country. And we'll be getting on with the soundbite of the Deputy President, William Ruto, who was in the county of Machakos yesterday. The hashtag on Twitter is New Day KE, and the short SMS code is 40920. We are back after the break. LifeServe Pharmacy is a healthcare provider for genuine medicine. Our main branch is located at Rubis Toll Station, Sabaki, Athi Riva on Mombasa Road. Our top value is convenient healthcare and dispensing quality prescriptions at the best value proposition. Our main attention spans around providing quality medicine and excellent services to our customers. We're giving 10% discounts on all supplements, hypertension and diabetic drugs. We also believe you shouldn't pay too much to stay healthy and that's why we'll match any advertised price on prescriptions and medicines. LifeServe Pharmacy is a healthcare provider with a human touch. And uh, good morning, welcome back to the broadcast. You're watching New Day Kenya and the hashtag on Twitter is New Day KE. The short SMS code is 40920. With me in the studio on my immediate side is Professor Masharia Munene who commented on political, social, and governance developments in the country. Prof, good morning. Thank you. Your time is appreciated. And Honorable Farah Malim is the former Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly and commented on social, political development. And of course, this comes hot on the heels of the reports that there's likelihood on the calling off of the elections in August 2022. And the Deputy President, William Ruto, yesterday in the county of Machako said, it's upon the leaders in the country to ensure that the country goes through peaceful political process in 13 months' time when Kenyans head to the poll to elect their next crop of leaders. He was accompanied by leaders from the Ukambani region, and here is what the DP William Ruto said. He inchi mungu atatupatia viongozi watakaufuata kutoka hapa. Don't worry, mutu wasiwatie hofu. God is in control. We will have peaceful elections. We will have a peaceful moment from now to 2022. Mutu asuatie hofu kwamba pengine kukawa, kukaenda, kukaharibika. Haiwezi kuharibika. Because we believe in God. 
is the Deputy President William Ruto yesterday. Now, Prof, starting with you. William Patrick here, Raila Odinga, also on Saturday in the county of CI during the battle of the let MP Koyo Mediwa did say that expect a political tsunami. And this, I mean, talks of a likely calling off of the elections in August 2022. What's the practicality in that? Uh, thank you. One, the former Prime Minister uh, has a habit of talking about some tsunamis. Mm. <laughs> you know, so it's nothing new. Because it's just another tsunami. Um, but the more serious question is the likelihood of postponing elections. Uh, there have been rumors talked about it, very unfortunately, uh, because they give the wrong impression, uh, mislead, they create confusion. And uh, the, there are cases in court right now. Mm -hmm. And the assumption is that if for some reason the court decide to reverse the court, I mean the lower the court, court. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, the higher court <laughs> ruling, uh, and then say, okay, we still have time to do something. And then it runs into other constitutional expectations about the election, because that is a fixed thing. Um, and I think it was um, court to boss at all who was saying we can postpone the election, mm -hmm. and then uh, so that we can have a BBI, uh, which I think was very unfortunate on his part. Uh, he should not have said that. Uh, one thing is that uh, Kenya does not want to be in the same boat mm -hmm. with Somalia and Ethiopia that have tinkered mm -hmm. with postponing elections uh, for whatever reason. We don't want to be in the same boat. Kenya is better than that. So the, we don't know what the courts will decide. But either way, uh, the High Court, when it was making its ruling, told the IBC to continue preparing for elections, mm -hmm. it's no more work. Not uh, this problem that has cropped up. Okay. So as far as I know, the IBC is continuing. With the exercise. With the exercise okay. of preparing for August 9th, 2022. Okay, and, and not only that, but also the strategic plan until 2024, which mm -hmm. was uh, launched at the Bombers of Kenya about a week ago by the IBC. Yeah, I think it's, it was a good idea that you always have to keep on planning ahead. Eh? and uh, to show that they are working, and they have to earn their keep. So it's not a bad idea. But the main thing right now in the country is focusing on delivering on the election in August 2022. Okay. Whoever wins, wins. Whoever loses, loses. Okay, we will talk about the appeal process that is, kept, that is set to kickstart tomorrow. And that is, of course, as the proponents of the BBI plan to appeal against the High Court ruling, which declared the BBI process unconstitutional, null, and void. Honorable Farah Malim, mm. then perhaps the reason as to why we have enshrined in law that uh, after every five years or after a cycle of five years, the second Tuesday of every August should be a general election day in the country is perhaps to stave off what we witnessed in 2007-8 eight post-election skirmishes in the aftermath of the general election in 2007. Given that, and a parliament that is said to be hearing that if there is going to be an extension, six months, six months, which is maximum of one year, do you exude any confidence that parliament will listen substantially to the reason that might, reasons that might be fronted for not conducting the general election in 2022 on time as stipulated by the law? Well, the, 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 to begin with, the fact that the elections can be delayed has got to be predicated upon a very, very, you know, momentous thing that has happened. Um, an earthquake or, uh, or uh, you know, flash floods and thousands of people have lost their lives and the whole country is in chaos and the infrastructure is destroyed. Uh, whatever it is, hurricane, uh, the idea of putting a debt in there was borrowed from the American one, which is the executive system, the presidential system, yes. which is cast in stone. November. November. Mm -hmm. Come hell or high tide. Uh, uh, and and, and it's, 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 everybody knows our debt. But in our case, we gave ourselves an element of flexibility. The Americans never gave themselves any flexibility, including when they were going to war. Mm -hmm. In our case, if we're in a state of war, 
if we have had a major calamity happening. I mean, those are the kind of things we, we the, the framers, I mean, I was part of the, the, the people who were looking at these things, and we realized that it can be a possibility of seeking an extension, but for a very valid reason. Uh, that valid reason, whether the fact that BBI has not been enacted is good enough mm -hmm. to warrant us to <clears throat> do this now, is, is questionable, in my own opinion. There are people who would argue out and say, yes, it is, uh, it warrants because uh, we've had, uh, this constitution did not, did not fully cure our problems because there were violences in the last election, although it was, you know, on the, on, on the debt. Uh, the, the only election that happened on that 2nd August uh, of uh, Tuesday, 2nd Tuesday yes. uh, of, of the month of August. It was 2017. Mm -hmm. 2013, there was an opinion yes. which was followed and it was given... March 2013. Uh, March 2013. Mm -hmm. We extended the thumb a little bit, but then for very, very valid reasons that time. So this time, the very second time when this election was supposed to happen on time, if look around for a, for, for a reason, there are those who say we had it in 2017 and we still ended up with violence. Mm -hmm. We still ended up with problems. So let us cure that problem by, by doing a certain amendment to the Constitution itself. Such that through the BBI? Through the BBI. Okay. So there are possibilities there. That possibility there. People are arguing, look, this Constitution did not, did not cure that problem. And the only thing that can cure the problem is if you have an expanded executive in which opposition uh, can have also its, its share in that. Okay. In where there will always be a grand coalition government. There will always be a grand coalition government, by the way, in such a, in such a situation. It, it's, 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 it's not the ruling party that's going to appoint all these people, no. The possibility is that these uh, alliances are going to be done, uh, the different parties will come together. Uh, the party that's going to win the presidential elections is not necessarily going to be the party that will have the, the optimum number or the highest number of members of parliament. So all, all this has been taken into consideration. So whether we are likely to have an extension of the term of this parliament okay. right now because of those compelling, compelling, logical, rational, for whatever reason, I, I have a feeling that it's possible. It might happen. Uh, uh, because that, that essentially is, is where people are going to look at, say, look, we've had this constitution before. Okay. We had it on time also, but we, 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 we still did not avoid the violence. There still, the still violence. are concerns in 2017. Yes, yes. And then we still had a, we still had a do or die kind of a thing because there was massive rigging in the last election. Uh, and, and the only way we can cure this and avoid rigging and avoid all these things is if, you know, we have this expanded uh, situation. So okay. I, I have a feeling for that reason, uh, somebody is going to come up with the idea that let's have uh, 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 an election postponed. Let's have a BBI kind of related election. Okay. Uh, but not necessarily BBI in its uh, current uh, form and, and shape, but a BBI probably done uh, more, in line, more, in, more in line with the constitutional, uh, constitutional provision. Uh, and, and, and maybe starting the ball, the, the, the thing all over again. Okay. And, and then uh, coming up with something in which uh, parliament is not going to have the role or, or the executive is not going to have the role of determining where constituencies go and this goes to the mandate of IEBC. In my opinion, that possibility is there. And if that possibility comes about, it is compelling in my opinion, and this thing is given to parliament, members of parliament don't mind having an additional six months again, another additional six months. Okay. Because 85% are not going to come back. All right. This time it's probably going to be even more than that. Then so they'll pass it with unanimity. Which, 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 which again translates to the interests. But uh, Prof, coming to you, where then do we draw the line between the threshold of what constitutes perhaps for us to call off the elections and the role of parliament here that is often held in public obloquy? Well, <coughs> It's difficult to say where the, the line is. Um, even as Mwashimiwa has said, uh, the MPs don't mind an extra month or two or three. So even a year. Even a year, too. <laughs> so they might do that. Not necessarily in the interest of the country, but in their interest to continue enjoying the parks and the pair. They have bills to, to clear. Uh, so they might do that for that reason. Not necessarily the reason of the country. Um, I would say that uh, I would like to wait for the, the decision of the, the, court of appeal. the Court of Appeal and the Supreme <clears throat> Court mm -hmm. in order to be able to say what's likely to happen. 
because right now it's premature. And uh, for one side to say the courts will decide this or will decide that way, it's premature. It's almost like dictating to the courts you must do this instead of letting the appeal, the court of appeal, look at the evidence and the arguments and logic and then say this is the fair way, the just way on this matter. Uh, so I would rather leave it to the courts uh, before saying whether it will be appropriate or not mm -hmm. to suggest uh, postponing the election. Although I would disagree with my friend, uh, I don't think it will be necessary. Okay. That, that's my position. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you don't think it will be necessary, mm -hmm. but that will depend on what the court says. Okay. Basically, then the submission by the uh, former Deputy Speaker Prof is that even having that set debt in law mm -hmm. has not addressed our problem in 2017. Practically, mm -hmm. uh, we had months of political uncertainty yes. up until the handshake. And you are of the idea that uh, it's not necessary for us to call off the elections. No. And does that mean then with the current constitution we can address our problems, for instance, if we invest more energy and give political goodwill to independent commissions constitutionally to undertake their mandates? I think, yeah, we, we can um, expect a little more goodwill than we have had, particularly on those people responsible. Uh, one of the reasons we have had problems is not so much the letter of the Constitution, it's the spirit of the Constitution. And those people we have entrusted with running the affairs of state have not always been the best. At least they have not always uh, indicated, I mean, shown that goodwill. And we also have leaders, whether they are in or out of government, who don't believe in the Constitution although they talk about it. Uh, so when you have uh, those who are prone in their utterances and behavior to creating violence in order to get what they want, then you have a problem. It doesn't matter what the letter says. As long as you have people who are prone to that. So the issue is how you change the attitude okay. of the leadership such that instead of um, encouraging violent confrontations in order to get political mileage, mm -hmm. that they do something different. Uh, if the attitude does not change, it does not matter how many times you change the letter of that constitution. It does not matter. Because there always will be somebody complaining about something. And we have seen it right from 1963 mm -hmm. or 62. Okay. Uh, every time, the, um, if you calculate the number of times, if I may dare to do so, where we have had people saying, let's change the constitution because something is not good. There are very many. Eh? We had it in 1968. The constitution was overhauled, mainly to deal with the political issues of uh, some interest. Then there was that attempted overhaul which failed. Yeah, and that's the one we keep on being told about. The one that failed, not the one that succeeded. Uh, the 1976 one. Eh? Mm -hmm. Then in the 19, late 1980s and 1990s, when Mweshimiwa was very active mm -hmm. in the, that uh, <laughs> agitation, uh, <laughs> no, we had a debate. Because I remember very well. Yes. Some people were saying the constitution is very good, it's extremely good. If only people followed it. Yeah. Others are saying this constitution is terrible. It allows the president to do everything and anything he wants. So he must overhaul the. The truth is that it was somewhere in between. Eh? So we did adjust the constitution, return the multi-party, the, 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 the many-party system. Yeah, yeah. Just we, we went back to it because we used to be in it, and it was um, uh, messed up in 1982 when it was. Now, so that happened, and then there was some engineering. Eh? Uh, President Moy imposed a two-term limit when he thought that he might lose the election. Uh, I don't know uh, whether you are in parliament at the time, but well, 1992. Uh, 1991, yes. Uh, two, yes, 19, yes. 1992. Yes. With, with uh, the Wetangula. No, no, no. Wako was there. Yeah, it was the attorney general. And the party, the parliament was all canoe yes. at the time. 
So it was possible to do that. And then uh, these other politicians thought they could win because Moi had lost in their mind, because Kaunda had lost. Now, when they didn't win, oh, Moi won is not the issue. <laughs> but he won <laughs> yeah? twice. Then he started saying this thing he imposed was not good. They tried to change it. And there was a rebellion within Khan. Yes, that was in 1997. Now, yeah, after 1997. Yes, after the yeah. second term. So every time, then we, we, when we had the NAC okay. thing, we were told this is wonderful. Yeah? Within a week, these people were fighting as, after they got into what? Mm. So, so, into if, so it's, the bottom line is about political interest. It's political interest and the goodwill and um, the attitude of the leaders. Okay. Because as long as they are fighting each other, they always find an excuse. For saying, let's change this, let's change this. Okay. On, on see, yes. Go ahead. You, you see, the, when you look at the, 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 the history of statecraft in this country, you, you, you look at, for example, I think the best democracy in this country was there during Kenyatta's time. Because you could not run against the president. He was unopposed always. As long as his position was secured, mm. he didn't care even if you're his vice president and you lost the election. If you lost, you lost. That was the end of it. That's true. So, so th there, was, there was that check and balance. I mean, the people's choices were always there. Always there. And that was, in my opinion, what you call, what you call responsive authoritarianism. Mm. He mm. had that authoritarianism. But uh, beyond anything below his office, I think he was unique. I don't think any other African president behaved in that fashion. I remember uh, Gatuguta. I don't know if Gatuguta is still alive. Yes, still yeah. alive. I think he might have gone to his work. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He represented the country. No, he represented the, the country the, in in the agitation for yeah. the establishment of yes. the of the, the UN the UN yes. headquarters here in Kenya. And spent and the General Assembly was there for three months. Mm -hmm. While he was there, the ground shifted here. But he he had this added, you know. In my opinion, he should have been rewarded with one of the top honors in the country mm -hmm. for having brought this uh, 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 very successfully, uh, along with the late, I think, Odell mm -hmm. Joey, Odell Joey, Odell yes. Joey mm -hmm. and other people. They did a fantastic job mm -hmm. and convinced the world. The first time, there was a UN headquarters outside a first world country. Yes, that was after New York and uh, Geneva. Yes, 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 a first world country. Uh, uh, then he came back and he said, Mr. Mzee, Mambo imeharibi kamini mefanya kazi, lakini wala uzawai. Ground ime shift. Ito kikuyu, ito kikuyu yeti. Mambo imeharibi kama. So what I want you to do is, let me ride with you in your limousine. And and you will sell me a watch or two just to drive. I drive sunroof. Now we need to get to Guta. Say, mwana mjua. Eh, bas, ya mefanya. Only that. Only that. Bas. Raka sema, apana, wewe get to Guta. And if they say no, say at me, but I have an attack. Which made a lot of sense. It made massive sense. Yeah. He gave him some little money of those days. He said, well, Kwenda, come out, Well and good. 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 If I may add a little bit and, of and, that. And he not, lost in that election. Not so much the Gatota story. Yes. But Monyo Ayaki used to be minister for I remember affairs. very well, yes. And wanted support. Yes. In Kibu And, and um, <clears throat> he used to say, when we, we talk, yes, the Minister of Foreign Affairs should not be an elected official. Yes, yes. Because yes, yes. when he's running around the world, yes, 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 and his backyard is burning, yes, because he used to he be not there, yep. and he's not there to because take care of it. He's, he's, he's working for the country. Yes, yeah. he's working for the country. And uh, he used to be in Madare, and then uh, sometimes he comes back and he finds Madare shifting. Completely shifting. <laughs> they're, they're different. different. People don't yeah. care. People are looking yeah. at the ground. You know, at the end of the day, mm. all politics is local. Yeah. So people are looking at that local thing. What are you delivering at local? They're not looking at what you're delivering for the nation. Okay. Mm. And, 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 and you know that that never happened. And even, even the issue of nomination yeah. during Kenyatta's time was very responsive. Mm. You, you remember that? Yeah. Extremely mm. responsive. Somebody who got nominated, it was serious. You see, now that one. It was that serious. Thing. That person yeah. had to be from a very, you know, a very, a very distinct Minority, he had to have a very special Gishaga, for example, used to be mm -hmm. liberated. Mm -hmm. You know, remember the, the father yeah. Woody Gishaga. Yeah. He has to have unique skills. That guy was uh, an, an, an academic, you know, used to be the chair of uh, the chancellor. He was of Nairobi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know, university council. Mm -hmm. but, but you see, the point I'm trying to get at is then we began messing with our, our constitution. 
uh, to begin with, we introduced the, 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 the Dijua single party. And then secondly, we said we're going to introduce Multi -party. the... No, 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 no. We're going to introduce the Q voting. Mulalongo mm. system. Mulalongo system. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the big achievements of the Mulalongo system is that uh, Matiba and <laughs> Gidraf Mweru mm. uh, went there and uh, Gidraf got 700 votes. Matiba got 14,000 votes, but they were very fast. <laughs> they said Matiba got <laughs> it was the other way around. <laughs> it was the other way around. <laughs> now, what do we have right now? Let me tell you. And that's when the country blew up. Yeah. When the country uh, decided, no, we will not accept this. And people went out into the streets until, of course, multi party had to be accepted in 1991. Uh, yes. What I'm trying to tell you allow the people space for them to exercise a certain autonomy. Let them be allowed to choose who they want as a leader, okay. as a member of parliament, yeah. as the MCA. Even if you tinker with the top position a little bit, the people are beginning, are willing to, you know, the only, the only, the only, one of the very few elections that took place that was free and fair was the 2007 one. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you remember that. Mm -hmm. 2007 one, in as far as the members of parliament were concerned. Mm -hmm. Okay, as far as, parliament, yes, then, as far as the presidential elections were concerned, there was a, there was a mess. But what did they do? Because this thing was delayed and the late Kivuitu was yes. there. Mm -hmm. And then what they did is that they just went back to the books. They did not try to give extra votes to an MP who lost, but they gave a lot of votes to an MP who already won. You know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> In the Rakanidi, for yes. example, the MP got what? For that to boost up the presidential to, to, tally. To try and get that presidential tally. So they went back to the same areas and, and boosted every member's parliament saying, uh, who won, who won his votes. And, and in the process, because, of course, the voter turnout was about 60% or 58%, so you could tinker with that quite a bit. But, and, and, and that's how they got the president. Now, when we went in there as parliament in 2007, and I remember very well, I remember very well, I've never said this before, but I'm going to say this, we saved the country literally between myself and Kenneth Marende. Kenneth Marende. Because when Ababu did the tantrums that he did. And Kibaki was seated. And Kibaki was seated. Mm -hmm. My party came to me, and I'm not going to share, mention names, and said, let us, the speaker can make a communication from the chair and say that matters that are raised by Ababu are very weighty and that you need to do a ruling on that on a few days later. If we did that, mm -hmm. this country would have exploded to hell. And that's when I stood very firmly with Marenda and I told him, you can't do that. It's not our responsibility as a chair to determine who is going to be elected as a president of this country or not. This thing comes from the the people. Uh, electoral Commission. Mm -hmm. Electoral Commission gives us a list. We're swearing in Kibaki as the member of parliament for Odaya. Odaya. Mm -hmm. We're not swearing him as the president of the country. That has already been done in another place. You, you see what I mean? Or oh, I don't know whether it was already done or it was being done. We said, no, we, we, we can't do it ourselves. It was done already. We can't do that ourselves. And, and I was seen as having, the two of us were seen as having betrayed our party ideals at that time. But the, the, the issue was that if we're going to do that, because the votes are very close, mm -hmm. if we're going to do that, then the country would have again exploded into another, into another chaos. So the, what I'm trying to tell you is that because we have that, those powers ourselves, we have those powers and we have members of parliament who are elected genuinely from their constituencies. Mm -hmm. Everybody, people had to protect a number of things. Okay. But you see now when members of parliament, 70% of them are rigged in one way or the other. <laughs> you get my point? then they will only take the, the, the direction given by the, by, by the executive mm. leadership of the country itself. Okay. Now, now let, let me add something there. Yeah, briefly. Maybe. Can I just finish okay. with one yeah. thing? Yeah. Let yeah. Me just that's that's why I'm saying, you see, during Moi's time, the good thing was that we did not have the 50 plus one system. It was presidential elections were conducted exactly the same way parliamentary elections are conducted. The parliamentary elections, the system is what's called the first past post system, which means if we had 20 of us, we run for a constituency. Mm -hmm. And the highest one gets 10,012. And, and that one who gets 10,012 will be the winner. Is a member of parliament. Even if the, even if the, the registered voters in that place are 200,000, yes. the one who has 11,000 becomes the MP for the that. MP elected. And that happens quite a lot in areas like you see. Okay. You see what I mean? But here we have, you have to win 50% plus, plus one, one of, the, of the total votes, uh, what they call cast, mm -hmm. and the 24, 24 counties, counties for you to become a president. Why do we have a double standard? Why is it that our MPs don't need that? And the MPs can come in with 25%. So that should apply across the board? 
But these are, these are the kind of things that we really have to look at. Okay. Why, why, why have it only for this one and not have it on the other one? You see, during Moe's time, we have it all. all. If there are 10 presidential candidates, there are 10, 000, 10 million votes cast, and the highest one gets 2 million votes, he was going to become the president. Okay. And that's how Moe won. Okay. But now you can't. You have to. Uh, so the rigging here now is massive. You're not going to rig uh, 10,000 votes or 20,000 votes to win an election, or even 2,000 votes. You have to rig millions to win elections. And because there are no ministers coming from parliament, to give comfort to the people who come from those areas that, after all, even if you don't have my presidential choice, I still have a minister who will be coming from my area, mm -hmm. who is going to be in parliament and who is going to support my people. Okay. You're going to pick up ministers from outside. We don't even know who they are. Okay. The, the so-called technocrats. Yes, mm. Prof, before I pose the next question, go ahead, please. You wanted to respond to that? Yeah. Um, the 2007 election is yet to be understood. There are a lot of myths about it, um, misinformation, and uh, we can agree and disagree. I know the Mweshimu and I don't agree on this one because I believe Kibaki won one. No, no, he didn't win. <laughs> no, no, see, I believe and he won. I, so. I see him to be the best president we've had in this <laughs> no, country so, all these years. Okay. But because, I still because don't see we are already well. disagreeing. Okay. Eh? Yeah. But, but, but what, what's clear is that... We agree on his performance, okay. but not on <laughs> the <laughs> mandate that we so, got it. What's, you, clear, you, what, what's clear, then, we all agree, is yeah. that the Electoral Commission of Kenya chairperson, then the late Kibishu, disowned... Yes. His own management yes, of the election. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Kibuito sometimes... He said there must be cooking something. They were cooking something. It took a long time. You know, Kibuito had a, uh, a misfortune of having a bad tongue. Because <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you say things that... He was very honest. <laughs> ...that confused himself. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Farah remembers you. I don't think you can remember. Yes. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> in 2005, he conducted the, the referendum. referendum. Yes. And he got a college. Yes. And he was supposed to retire, actually, get out of office. He didn't. No, he, he wanted to. Yes. And then some people said, no, okay, we don't know election. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't. <laughs> That's how he ended up there. Now, the conduct of that election needs to be studied properly. I remember I was commenting on some TV program. And I remember calling the producer and saying, why are you broadcasting lies? Which was? Well, the figures were... Did not make sense. At the time? At the time, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the, the numbers were, the tiling was coming in live. Okay. Yeah, you know, so Straight you, from the station. So you have in one constituency, which I will not mention for my interest and other people's interest, the number said the voters registered were 40,000. Those who cast votes were 70,000. Mm. So I called them, so what, what are you doing? Why you brought it? And he started explaining what had happened. That his particular station, KBC, did not have agents anywhere. So they were just picking figures from nowhere, okay. from other people, and then repeating them. Now, by the time that was caught, you can imagine the damage already done, eh? creating that psychological momentum that this is what is going on. Yet the reality, was different. You see, the only uh, organ that ever conducted what we say a good investigation was the Krigler Commission. Yes, which looked into the post-election. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, no. the IBC, the, the conduct the, of the, the election. The work, the work was they were looking at. The, the, I was looking at the violence, but the claims that figures were cooked at at KICC, that was the main claim, and therefore. The supposed the violence was therefore justified in that sense, although the violence was there long before the election, and even during the election. So when people talk about post-election violence, that's a misnomer, because it's a cover-up, technological cover-up. What did Krigra do? They said, okay, you said these were the constituencies that were messed up. Yeah. Let's look at them. Retaliate, confirm, re do everything. And I remember Krieger was saying, whoever has evidence, come and give the evidence. They chickened out. Those who are saying that. Chickened out. Who then were displeased by the outcome? Yeah. Because they, they, they chickened because they didn't show up. Okay. The opposition then? Yes, mostly. Okay. Now, <laughs> the finding, I remember the Krieger Commission was supposed to have a balance. Yeah? PNU. An ODM. An ODM, equal numbers. And then some foreigners who are 
kind of this. What did they say? They said they don't know what happened outside somewhere else. <laughs> but they know at KICC there was no tampering with figures. That's what they said. Representatives from both political entities. Yes. Okay. I mean, that was... A, that was when... The, that's, yeah, see, they were not tempering. Okay. Yes. Were, that was... Doing, that's what, that, they were doing the but of course, KCC was okay. only getting that, the numbers. That was where the final results were to no, be they, they, No, they cross-checked the votes, all of them, from all the contentious you, you see, constituencies. I, I, yeah? I want to... So, let, let me finish for now. So, their conclusion is they may not know about things outside there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but at KACC, they were sure. There the was figure, no interference. There was no interference. Okay. The figures were right. Okay. G G they went ahead to say, because I follow that very keenly, that there was poor arithmetic on Kevuito's part. That in that poor arithmetic, Kebaki was denied 40,000 votes by bad arithmetic that Kalonzo was denied about 30,000 votes by bad arithmetic. And that Raila was denied 20,000 votes by bad what? Mathematics. Yes. But there was no underhandedness Okay. KCC. Okay. So if you project that throughout the country, what does it tell you? Okay. So we, we, <coughs> and of course, the number of constituencies. Yeah. And Krigler went on to point out key recommendations yes. to be done to the electoral that commission of the country. Yeah. Okay, to address all the pertinent issues that he said yeah. was uh, the point at which the violence was precipitated, or the stemming point of the problem that we had at the time, including mm -hmm. reforms that ought to be made to the elections. Yes. And then we went to the referendum, the 2013 election, and 2017 elections. But Honorable Farah Malim, then the discussion on the. Kenyatta aspect of leadership, the Moi times, the multi-party democracy, the struggle for it, and subsequently Kenya becoming a multi-party state after the repeal of Section 2A of the old constitution, then the Kibaki is in a coalition, the 2005 referendum, the 2007 disputed elections. But all these, again, seem to be informing what happened in 2017 and the BBI. Mm. Then the courts from tomorrow, Honorable Farah Malim, start listening to the petitions of appeal by the proponents of the BBI report who feel aggrieved by the High Court ruling that declared the process unconstitutional, null, and void. Given what has transpired and you saying this might be the panacea to our problems, what are we looking forward to? Are, are the courts likely to be in some way huddled towards the attainment of what you say is a sane political Kenya post-2022 to end the perpetual continuity of political violence? The, 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 the courts are going to rule on the law and facts, the facts in issue. They're not going to rule in accordance with the sociological conception of the whole thing, the way we see it as a country. They're not going to make a political, political decision from there. Although the decision is going to have a political impact, mm -hmm. they'll, make a, they'll not make a political decision. It defeats my... my, my by any stretch uh, of the mind, uh, the possibility of uh, overturning 23 grounds, 23 grounds that were cited in that place by the High Court. The high court. Mm -hmm. and, and any of, I think, about 1918, one of them, would, is, is good enough to overturn that thing, to basically to, 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 to do away with, to kill BBI in its current form mm -hmm. and state. Mm -hmm. So the chances of all these things being overturned and the uh, uh, Court of Appeal saying, now you can go proceed with the BBI, is in my opinion uh, not possible. By any stretch. Which means then that the party... But then there are other pertinent issues. Okay. There are other pertinent issues that the president and other people of interest would want to address. For example, saying the president should be a prosecutor, should be done these things. The IBC matter. And, and I think the, of, the court went overboard in that. A, a lot of areas. That in some of cases, some of them, I said there was an element of activism in that. But anyway. Uh, but they also have their points. They do have basically very firm, grounded on, on law. In law. Uh, uh, but then, having said that, having said that uh, the possibility of overturning that is not there. 
I want to go back to an old debate we've just had here. Yes, briefly. <laughs> Very briefly. In the 2007 votes, all the combination voted for Kalonzo, you know, DMK. He came number three. <clears throat> the rest of the country, except the mountain region, was by and large united. Behind and, Odinga. Uh, ODM, yes. Now, it beats any logic that the whole, this whole nation was defeated by the Gema, nation, Mount Kenya nation, in votes, and Kibaki came in and won that election in itself is. Because even if the, if, if uh, uh, what's his name, uh, the combination had voted with PNU, then you could safely say, yeah, now that makes sense. Kibaki might have won. If they voted with us, it would be, or rather with ODM that time, it would have been a landslide. Okay. But, but when you look at the numbers in both cases, uh, you, you can stretch the numbers of uh, my, my, my old friends, my old lecturers, uh, backyard by any, <laughs> by any way you went, but still you can't reach that. It can make it as elastic as you can. Okay, but the elasticity has limitations. <laughs> that elasticity has limitations. I agree, elasticity so, has so, limitations. So. Okay. May I respond? Okay, yes, you'll respond. Let me go. Let, let, let's, go to, let's, let's go on a break. When we come back, Prof, I'll give you the chance to respond. Okay. As we also discuss uh, what's in store politically for the ODM party, the former Prime Minister Raila Odinga during the burial of the late game MP Jakoyo Mirio in the county of Siaya did say the ODM party will be conducting primaries that will be transparent after receiving a report. And besides that, he said that we are coming with a tsunami or we are initiating a political tsunami in 2022. For Raila Odinga is an individual, we then in English grammar means plural, and we will be dissecting that we after we come back from the break here on the broadcast. Stay tuned. And uh, good afternoon, welcome back to the broadcast. You are watching New Day Kenya. The hashtag on Twitter is New Day KE. The short SMS code is 40920. Many thanks for your contributions. And of course, we appreciate your feedback and company here on the program. Prof, your right of reply, please. Um, the election results and uh, the intensified hula baloo. That was 2007? Yes. Yeah. Well, there are a few interesting things that developed. Eh? One, the Secretary of Foreign Affairs for Britain. Within a day or so, he was there jumping. There must be power sharing. There must be. So said, On what basis are you saying that? Eh? Which may imply that there was some fishy thing going on. Eh? Then later, some of the Germans sponsored the publication of a book about the coast. And I remember talking to the man in charge. Uh, his argument was that uh, the turnout in the Rakanid was higher than it should be. Mm -hmm. eh? uh, about 60 or 70 percent. Higher than it ought to be. Uh, yeah, I mean, they said you can't have this kind of thing. So I asked him now, I have no problem with that statement. How do you explain turnouts where the turnout was 100% or 90, and you're ignoring it. Eh? Mm -hmm. Like the ones I pointed out. Eh? Why, why are you ignoring it? The guy coiled because he was not thinking through, because he had an agenda. Then the book he sponsored. Who is uh, that? Yeah, the Germans. Mm. Okay? And the book was saying, uh, about the coast, yeah, that the only place where Kibaki got votes was the mountain region? No. The Kibaki got votes at the coast were where there were Kikuyus. That's what he said. And yet the Kikuyus had been kicked out in many parts. Eh? They were not there. Yet, when you look at the data he produced, okay. this ward, that ward, there never were Kikuyus in the first place. Yet Kibaki won. So I asked him, how do you explain this anomaly? If what you say is true, and your own data, forget about my data, okay. your own data, says Kibaki won here, and he won here, and he won here, and he won here. I mean, what are you talking about? I won't say what the reaction was because he felt very, very bad about it. Okay. No, should I go on? Because the, the, you know, the, the, that's why I said proper studies has not been properly done okay. on this issue. All right. In some places, very far, you have people who are making 
Lorum Law is very youthful people, eh? bigger, eh? Yeah. and they don't vote, eh? they have no vote. Eh? And then you go in some rural area and find some elderly people who are thinking soberly. And they were saying they are voting for Kibaki, not because it's Kikuyu or anything like that, because they credited him with the CDF. Okay, and, and at the and time? And they said, yeah, they, they said he's the one who, well, this thing, where was it before? Okay, and at the time, of course, his slogan was uh, mm -hmm. in the bill up to the elections, Kazi and Dele. Kazi and Dele, okay. yes. And now, the other side was uh, the future is orange. Okay, so. Okay, hold on. Now, let's come to the uh, present day, because uh, that largely informs why we have elections, because in a democracy, it's often healthy. And uh, how you conduct elections and how independent your institutions are also is uh, a measure of how, our yeah. deep, how deep our democratic credentials are. Honor Paramalim, then, what's your understanding of today's political establishment? Now, Gideon Moy says he's not feeling, I mean, or he's belonging to the One Kenya line, seems to be a lukewarm one. You have the ODM party who says, ODM party leader, Royal Odinga, who says that a tsunami is coming your way and he's, uh, I mean, digging a hole into the Deputy President William Ruto's a political economic monster, the Hasla Nation. And you have the President who seems to be a Kenyatta one, more or less, but then again, he's taking after his political godfather in wanting to have a stake and influence his succession. And then on the other part, you have the third voice, which seems to be lacking in Kenya's present day democratic context, then how do we navigate all this political landmine? Not a single president in this country has had an, an umbilical cord tied to the past president. The closest there was was between Kenyatta and the colonial masters when they left. He came in initially as a revolutionary but later on was a conformist who essentially did not upset much. So the relationship between him, the white settlers, mm. the British government was, was very cozy throughout until, until uh, he passed on. But he passed on, so Moi did not have somebody to guide him. Kibaki took over from his <laughs> arch nemesis for that period of time. You see, they were mm. friends one time, his vice president, but later on, of course, they, they fell out and, and stayed apart for as long as it took. Uh, Uhuru-Kibaki relationship was, was one that was neither cold nor warm, mm -hmm. uh, uh, other than the fact that... It was respectful. Respectful, that's the right word to use, yeah. Other than the fact that Kibaki is the one who gave him his name, by the way, the name Uhuru. And when he was born, was he born 63 or 62? 61. 61. Uhuru? Yes. October, yes. October 1961. Yes, yes. He was named Uhuru by Kibaki. Uh, and, and of course, he, he maintained that, that relationship, but they were in, in, in very distinct different camps initially. And Kibaki was making it to the presidency. Uhuru actually ran against him. There were these only two of them. Yes, 2002. And, and, uh, so, so whether it's going to succeed right now under Kenyatta too, whether Uhuru is going to sit with the person who sits on that chair, hot seat, mm -hmm. is somebody anointed by him? I have my doubts. I have my very, very serious doubts. Okay. And as we progressively continue towards the, the finish line, it's going to become increasingly very costly for you to be associated with your, with Uhuru. Let me be very honest with you. It's going to be very, very costly for, for, for Uhuru to endorse you. And, and, and more so the two people who is, is likely to endorse right now. Uh, uh, because those two would be based, or three would be based on friendship. If he says, uh, Gideon Tosha, mm -hmm. Gideon is not going to win this seat. The end of Gideon's quest for that seat for this time. If he says, proceed and assist my friend, although we had our issues, but then uh, he assisted me for two previous times, let Ruto take over this thing. Half the people who are with Ruto right now are going to leave him because they will see a continuation of those very difficult 
10 years. This has been the most difficult 10 years in the history of modern Kenya. If he says, I'm supporting Raila, precisely because of that, nobody from the mountain region is going to support Raila, I can assure you on that. Okay. And, and, and people will just go the other way. They're looking at, you know, things are changing. Things are changing in the country. If he says, you know, other people like from the Okoa, Kenya, and the rest of them, even them, he has to uh, operation, what, what was it, Okoa? Mm -hmm. Kenya Alliance. Kenya Alliance. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. He still has to do it at a safe distance. Mm -hmm. And not to be seen to be the real man who is behind this. They still have to do it in a, in a clever manner. And the best way for a, a former president is, you know, what you say, uh, MacArthur said, President, generals never die, they just, they just fade. They just fade, they just wither, they just disappear. Okay. The best, the best, <laughs> thing, the best thing is. for the president to fade. Let the president just, just <laughs> let him just, you know, slowly, okay. without any hula baloo. Okay. Just like Kibaki. Where is Kibaki now? You know. Comfortable, wherever he is. Comfortable. Maybe you know that. And, and you can rest like assured, that. Uhuru is another guy who's really going to enjoy his retirement. You know, mm -hmm. you, the, the feeling you get sometimes is that. He's never been happy on this seat. Mm. Sometimes you get the feeling that he's never been that happy mm. <laughs> all his life. He didn't want it. Mm. <laughs> all that, his life. That, that's what he keeps saying because he yeah. says he misses his social life. Yes. Mm. So, 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 so the, the way I see it myself is that this year is going to come up with a hell of a lot of dramas. Okay. Yeah. Massive dramas. And, and, and the end result, the final product, might be too far away from anything envisaged now. Okay. Uh, now, coming to tsunami. My good old friend, I, by the way, I, every presidential election that I voted, I either voted for him or voted for his father, <laughs> except when I voted for Nyachai mm -hmm. in 2002. And I knew Nyachai was not going to win, yeah. but just to show my protest. Yeah. <laughs> you get my point. Uh, See, your man had been uh, jolted by Raila. Uh, yeah, yes, he yeah, sent a yeah, memo yeah, you and then he yeah, turned yeah, against yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the yeah, wife of party. Yeah, yeah. I okay. mean, I mean, no, no, I, mean no. I mean, he, he, he betrayed okay, us that, in a matter that, of that hours. That was in 2002. <laughs> yes, yes, in a matter of hours. Uh, uh, we, we signed an MOU. <laughs> <laughs> we paid for the bill. By the way, that bill was paid for by Yachai. <laughs> all, all those efforts in that to hold up back that day. Okay, that was uh, the, the press briefing at Serena. Yes. 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 Yeah, and, and, and I was talking to and Charles. I, I just wish Charles and yeah. Fred Matiangi are looking at this now because I was the chairman of four people that time. Yes. <laughs> so I was the chairman. Yeah. And I kept telling them, look, gentlemen, we have been done in. And, and <laughs> they said, lost his school. Yeah. Who's talking to you, Farah? <laughs> We've just finished this. And Charles himself was also of the opinion. Fred Matiangi was of the opinion yeah. that we have not been done in. I was the only one who was saying we've been done in. Yeah. And you know, I was sitting right next to Nyachai in that, uh, in that, uh, in that. Uh, the briefing. No, 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 no. In the final moment when he yeah, said, Simon, I'm joking back in news. Yes. Yeah. You know what he was saying that? Yeah. And I, and I was saying that Kibaki was, uh, Nyachai was sitting next to me. Okay. Was what next, was the reaction? Next to, next to me. <laughs> and, and then he said, I'm a Simon. <laughs> <laughs> I said he has endorsed the Kibaki. Mm. And I kept telling you this. What? And that was what I told you initially. <laughs> I kept telling you, yes. So, so the point I'm trying to tell you is this. Uh, 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 sometimes you, 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 you run into serious problems if you see what your friends don't see because then they, they need you. <laughs> and then that yeah. comes to the They refuse to believe you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You become the one out. What okay. I'm trying to tell you. Okay. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you. For, for, for my good old friend, Raila, and I have a lot of respect for him, and um, uh, a lot of uh, tough uh, words I've always had for him, too. Uh, he, he will talk of this tsunami. This is the one man who has conducted his politics as a, on drama, mm -hmm. yeah. one drama after the other and has gotten away with it, and has never had any, you know, powerful substance to sell to Kenyans. But, but for lack of a better choice, ourselves, we're sick and tired of, of, of Moi and then Kibaki mm -hmm. and then all those, you know, who are even at some stage. Uh, we wanted a change for whatever. The good thing he is, by the way, and I, it's always good to give somebody uh, credit where credit is due. He's not a dictator, by the way. Contrary to what most people think. If he belongs to the same, grouping and you tell him this is wrong and you are many of you saying that he can easily he, he's, he's one person who can who will follow 
you will follow that that okay. that wisdom. All right. Uh, you see what I mean? But 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 then we have had, we have another problem. The two few people who can tell him that you're wrong, he goes, mm -hmm. let us change. Jacoya was one, he's now gone. Jacoya is gone. Uh, 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 Orango does it conveniently when it's convenient, mm -hmm. when interest does not, personal interest, by the way, doesn't mm -hmm. dictate that. He will always be <laughs> on here and there. Mm -hmm. But he himself, Raila, is, is, is very happy. He always comes out of these things mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the very least. In the very least. Okay. He knows how to <laughs> with, 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 with something. <laughs> okay. With something. And when I say something, it's, uh, it's in, in quotes. It, that something could be too many things. <laughs> you know what I mean? So let, let us see how it's going to work now. Yeah. But the way I see it myself is that you can take some people for a ride all the time. You can take uh, uh, a lot of people for a ride for a short period of time, but you can't take all the people for a ride all the all time. Okay. So I think this is a moment in which <clears throat> people are going to demand from Raila. Okay. A lot more than they've demanded in the past. Including the, including the parties in the NASA coalition that yes, you yes. have a party. No, no, no. I mean, yep. those ones have already they crafted their own things. Okay. It, it doesn't matter whether Gideon is going to be with us. So mm -hmm. it's not, I don't think he's going to leave that uh, coalition. Okay. Uh, as for, as for, as for, Odinga. as for, right, no, no, Uhuru. Uhuru is, is, is doing exactly the way Kibaki transacted politics towards the end. Anybody who came to him, Kibaki, ah, Basi, Sama, to attack us, you know, Okay. And, and that's why we, yep, had, yep. we had this MOU, which was being done with Mudavadi. Mudavadi, and then later. Because Kibaki literally called some of his lieutenants and said, look, it doesn't look very good to have another Kikuyu again. So, so instead of having this country to afford something, how many tribes are we? 42 uh, plus then some then 43, now. 40, yeah, 43, 43 now. now. 43 now plus Makonde. Yeah, that time we were 42. It's going to be 41 against mm -hmm. one. Yes. Let's let's change the thing. And he's the one who got uh, Alex Brady, Abdikadir, my friend, uh, Kabando, many of them actually to initially uh, link up with Mudavadi. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Mudavadi again was uh, towards the end. When Ray Kibaki saw the way things were going, okay. he just mm -hmm. withered. You know what I mean? Okay, and there was also Jeremiah Kion in the ring. Jeremiah Kion yes. in the ring. And there are a good, good number of them. Yes. A good number of them. Okay, mm -hmm. yes, Prof. Then uh, let me come to you on this because it's equally important. And the Deputy <coughs> President, William Luther, seems to be working around an economic model that uh, he believes will ascend him to authority, and that is the uh, senior most civil servant in this country, the presidency. But given that the ODM party chief, Raila Odinga, also tore apart his way of doing politics and what he said was not helpful looking at the economic mm. status of many Kenyans. But isn't it interesting, and how will this perhaps shape the outcome in 2022, that almost 65% of the voting register will be made up by young people who have no ethnic subscription and can neither speak their ethnic language? Well, if that is the case, I think it's a good development. Eh? That they have no it, is, it is a positive. If, uh, if they don't have that uh, ethnic uh, affiliation and attachment, and then they'll be able to listen to logic and whatever it is. Uh, and it's true. Uh, you have about five million people who could not vote in the last election because they were underage. Now they are eligible. Yes. Um, the youth bulge. In fact, most of the voters cannot remember Moyo as a president because <laughs> they, were, they were not there uh, on this earth um, at the time. And if they were there, they were very young at the time. So that development in itself is not bad. Uh, now, the, I think that your question was on the, the models being... Yes, the model and the, the impact the, of the, 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 the That being uh, uh, promoted. Uh, both politicians, Raila Odinga and William Ruto, are very crafty politicians. They give it to them. They were together in 2007 in the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. And they crafted things together. Whether good or not is not the issue. But they were together. And they know each other very well. Uh, you cannot say that uh, Ruto knows Raila more than Raila knows Ruto. Mm -hmm. They know each other. And they are maneuvering skills. What I think Ruto has done he has crafted a narrative that seems to resonate with 
a lot of people, the youth, eh? mm -hmm. and uh, whoever has grievance of any kind. And since he's uh, very articulate, witty, in the way he makes the presentation, he seems to um, mobilize uh, people. Now the response, and whoever is advising him, give them credit for whoever they are advising, because they are doing, they are doing well. The response from the other side, um, from Raila's team, uh, because that's where the, the challenge is, they're just the two of them, mm. uh, needs to improve. In encountering the narrative? Yes, encountering the root of narrative. Yeah. Root. Who needs to improve? Raila. And the team, whoever is opposing Ruto. Ruto. They need to come up with a better narrative than has been see seen so far. Um, and that's, I think that's part of the concern right now, that Ruto seems to be getting away with the narrative. And the countermeasures or counterarguments don't seem to be resonating as well. So the question would come, then why is that the case, if that is the case? What is it that the other side needs to do okay. to resonate with the people? With the people? What, what, what the, the, big issue is that, uh, the big issue is that which, first of all, has got to be deciphered. Mm -hmm. It has got to be established. Yes. What do the two uh, groups stand for? Mm -hmm. If they stand for anything different from each other, no, yeah, what they do, it? they do, but what, in terms what do of the detail, they stand for? What do they stand for? Mm. Yep. In, in both cases, what mm. could you say? You could identify this kind of policies, this kind of ideological persuasion with this guy, and this kind of this. Mm. It's very hard to say because uh, they 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 cut, cut from the same cloth, you know, the, except for their pedigree part of it. <laughs> the, but um, the, the only thing they have in common. <laughs> Mm -hmm. the, uh, the only thing they both have, in, the, 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 everything they have in common, they are both believe in flexing your political muscle and not entertaining any opposition in your backyard. Regardless. Regardless. Yeah. You crush any opposition. Yeah. I agree. They, 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 they have that in common. They both have. They both. Um, and they both are both rubber rousers. Rubber rousers, and at the same time, they are headstrong, and uh, it's them and them alone. You see what I mean? That's okay. why Ruto would bring in a team of young people. He go into parliament the next time. He gets rid of them all and brings another team. Mm. You see what I mean? Because he doesn't want anybody who's smart. There's nobody who's smart who's there in his, in, in his, in his group. Uh, Raila, because of the fact that he's been out in the cold, he was not in the instruments, he was not holding the instruments of power. He tried that at one time, chased away all everybody, like Norengo and Yang Nyongo and the rest of them after the first... Uh, after the 2000, uh, mm -hmm. yes. uh, uh, you know, in the 1998 so, elections, yeah. when they all lost, mm -hmm. uh, except Orengo, and even Orengo won on, on Fort Kenya, and the subsequent election, he lost. Uh, but then because he's out there in the cold, he's not wielding the instruments of government, he needed them uh, to put together that, uh, you know, very powerful uh, manifesto narrative in there to show these big brains around there who are good economists, who are good everything, and use their brains as think tank. But, but, but I have a feeling that if he gets into power, an absolute power, I mean, not, not, not an appointed prime minister, okay. uh, he will not need any of them. He's going to be there for himself and his family. They had a little problem the other day. Yes. And Lorengo yes. saying yes. there's something wrong yes. with them. So, so, CBI. CBI. Yes. so, so, so uh, to that extent, they share everything. The love for material gains, they're both filthy wealthy and nobody knows how they made money. They both love it. And they both love money in a big way. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and they don't, none of them stand, can stand in the opposition. That's why you see the, uh, both of them come out there and, and get very agitated. Kubeka uh, Beka, you know, all those okay. things. Okay. You can go. <laughs> you know, who are you? You can, go. you know, that kind of stuff. Okay. So, so, so the, the, the way I see it myself is that the country needs more choices than just that. Yeah. The third alternative. Well, not the third alternative. You I can mean, have a third, a fourth, even a fifth alternative. alternative. But okay. basically, have an alternative other than that. You, but, but, you see, but, when, when with but, this country, I was in parliament in 1993 to 97, end of 97, up to, you know, 
when debates used to be interesting, when parliament was a house or a shop, a big supermarket of ideas. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you will always be talking ideas and ideas and ideas and you know, powerful intellectual disposition in that place. And, 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 and people easily used to congregate on certain, even when you're not from the same party, you still sit together and discuss certain uh, magnificent ideas for this country's future. Okay. Then I saw the one of uh, the 10th parliament of the 2008 to 2013 thing, which was, which was uh, I believe, probably the best parliament we've had in this country since independence. When, when, when uh, uh, prime minister was there, who is going to be held accountable for the actions of the government and on the, the floor ministers. of the house. And ministers were there. And when I could rule as uh, sitting on the chair, prime minister out of order. And you are his uh, mem uh, party I, member. I was from the same party. And when the party would want me to go do uh, things in a given direction, I would say, no, this is not mm -hmm. in the interest of the country. And we proceed and, 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 and do what's in the best interest of the country. But of course, with a massive rationale and logic, uh, uh, not, not, not just power. And, and where, where you would enjoy watching the debate as it goes on. I met somebody, people these days who say, we, we, never want, we no longer watch, watch mm. the parliamentary proceedings mm. uh, because of the quality of the debates. Out there. Okay, we were just listening. But, but you mentioned a very important point. Then what's the alternative and how important is ideology and policies uh, to underpin you, that process? You see, you see, let me tell you one thing. Let me tell you one thing. Moi was there. He might have not acquired a lot of credentials in the names, in the, in the form of degrees and uh, a lot of things. But because he has lived in this country through the whole of those modern history, the man was full of wisdom. Full of wisdom. Yeah. And the team around him, the men who were there those days. I met Lawrence Sagini in Parliament. And I was sit at his feet there, and, and, and Dennis Okomo, and, and, and the late Onyonka, you, you see mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and sit with Michuki for hours, although we, we disagree on a lot. He was a little bit of a cheap tribalist when you look at it from another thing, ethnicist. But the man had so much wisdom. I enjoyed sitting with him and, and, and listening to him and listening to the history of his country. But he was a stickler also for systems. He loved mm -hmm. systems. Yeah. He loved the law. People had to obey the law. Uh, you see what I mean? Okay. Now, now those, those were the, 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 G, the, the gems, the gems that were there those days. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you get my point. And, 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 and Kibaki, of course, Kibaki. I, I'm, I, I would love, I, I would sit with Kibaki. I, well, there's a time I sat with him for two solid hours, just the two of us, just listening to Mzee and asking one question after the other. And he does not take offense of it, you know? The man had the time for you. Mm -hmm. Because he, 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 had not, he, he didn't need to prove anything. He just was using his brains and his experience and the rest of it. Okay. But then we got into this so-called digital group. And, and the digital group brought, they didn't bring any digitals. They brought musicians and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and on, on that note, then, can, can I have the... And, and, okay. and, 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 and fugitives and convicts okay. and, you know, and... <laughs> Okay, uh, pro pro just, just what, we, we, we put this for our viewers on the screen so that uh, they'll be able to get the front page of the People Daily this Monday morning. Here are the revealed members of Parliament, 31 in number, who have not spoken in the House in the year 2020. They are just a sample. Gideon Moy, Baringo County Senator, Amina Gedo, Mandela County Woman MP, Jen Chabaibai, Elgeo Marakot County Woman MP, George Aladwa, Makarara Constituency in Nairobi, Oscar Suri, Kapseret, Member of Parliament in Wasingeshu, Sylvanas Osoro, South Mugrango, Member of Parliament, and Imran Okoth, Kibra Constituency, Member of Parliament, who was elected after the demise of his brother in 2019. He was elected to office in November 2019. So, Prophet, your take about the, on this? Uh, the silent MPs. They are very and I'm sure you wanted to respond to also. They are, they are, they are very uh, noisy outside, but not in Parliament. And that's what the purpose is. <laughs> and they, I mean, that's a shortcoming on their part. They, are, they lack confidence, they lack uh, skills, and they cannot sit in parliament and confront uh, the speaker for a who ruled them out of order almost. <laughs> now, let me, I was, I was, it's not uh, that I was going to respond to the speaker. I was simply going to compliment him. Mm -hmm. Because of all the deputy speakers that we have had, he stood out. 
we can remember Farah <laughs> making his ruling and then turning around. <laughs> So, I mean, that's what I wanted Thank to you. say. That, Thank you. Uh, you, Thank you. you can put them online there. Yeah. And people will tell you, yes, they remember Farah as a deputy speaker. Mm -hmm. uh, not many sp deputies mm -hmm. can, uh, can be said about that. About the silent MPs, where they win because of other things, uh, not because they are able to pre represent people in parliament. And that, that, that's what normally is. There always are those people. And if you ask them, they say, they, my job is not to go and make noise in parliament, mm -hmm. it's to go and uh, look after you people. M machinani. Machinani. Okay. So they say they are machinani people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then uh, to you, Farah Malim, as we finish up, because uh, of time, Kiamba parliamentary by elections, and we are seeing how the campaigns are unfolding in the president's home county of Kiambu, expected to be held on July the 15th, next month, by the grace of God. And this clearly is... Uh, coming at a time when the Jubilee Party is experiencing fragmentations. And the UDA party, the DP William Ruta, last week alluded to it, or association rather, or subscription for that matter in the county of West Pokot. What does this face off mean between Kenyatta and Ruto, or the Huruto? And what does, it, what does it portend for their political marriage going forward that has been in existence since 2016? Well, I was I I I read a I read a I read a very interesting uh, piece of uh, humor. This time when a husband and wife <laughs> have a pact and they decide let's commit suicide together, mm -hmm. and and the husband was serious about it, but he wasn't sure whether his wife was going to be serious about that suicide pact. So he said let's jump, mm -hmm. and then uh, he waited a bit to see that she jumps. She jumped. He wanted to jump after her, and then he realized she had opened up a parachute. <laughs> <laughs> no, then he pulled back from the edge, and he says, "My fears were confirmed." You know what I mean? <laughs> Cannot be trusted. I didn't trust her. I'm just about to trust her, and then she opens up a parachute. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> <laughs> the relationship between the two old friends <laughs> has been a very interesting one. <laughs> and and they were the one opens the parachute. Or not. <laughs> or the one with we sit, sit, stand back to yeah. see whether this other one is going to jump. I mean I think uh, there's so much distrust. Yeah. It's actually so, unfortunate. So much distrust. Mm -hmm. There's so much distrust that, uh, and the way I figure out Uhuru sees it is that uh, uh, in the worst of situations, mm -hmm. I would rather support Raila for the presidency than take a chance with Uhuru. With, with, uh, with Ruto, sorry. Take a chance with Ruto. And, and, and the gloves are off. And um, Ruto has made powerful inroads in the backyard of the president. And those powerful inroads, in the manner in which they were structured and crafted and operationalized, be very difficult or even the president, to, to debunk it within, by, by talking to the elders. No, it goes down to the very ordinary people out there. Okay. When you talk <clears throat> about the hustler nation, you talk about the wheelbarrow, the narrative is different. It's a class war. It's basically a class struggle that has been created by our friend Ruto and successfully, very successfully, deceitfully, has crafted himself okay. as, as a hustler. As a champion. Of as, no, no, mm -hmm. as a poor man. Mm -hmm. He is appealing, he's talking to the poor people, and, and, and everybody else is supposed to be an oligarch of some kind. You see what I mean? Yeah. An oligarch, a bourgeoisie of some kind, 
and I'm your only hope. And the little he had, undoubtedly, I don't know, because I don't see many big, big businesses of his. And in any case, if you're a president or a vice president, deputy president, you have a business, then your business is always going to flourish. There's no way that business can go down. Because the government is the biggest spender in the country. So if you're told that I'm an insurance person, then of course, who gives the biggest insurance mm. contracts the in the country? It's the, the government. government. <coughs> uh, the yes, it's the government. And, and many other things, the banking, the finance industry, okay. and the rest of it. So, Uhuru has got a very, very powerful uphill task. Okay. And in the event, mm -hmm. in the unlikely event, or the likely event, or the chance event, that Ruto becomes the next president. Forget about a Kenyatta economic empire in this country, or a big, or a Moi, or any of those ones. Okay. There is going to be a very powerful capitalist revolution mm -hmm. in, in which that will all change. So I know they know it very well, and they will not take a chance, but to what extent they can uh, they can uh, uh, effect that. They can. They can. They can okay. effectively counter it. Right. What what Uhuru needs to understand, and should be, he needed to understand from day one, is that Ruto was a creation of Moi, and and for him mm -hmm. to get to where he is, he had to fight Moi. You, you see what I mean? Okay. So so he will only get. He will only use you and get to a certain level. Okay. He will fight you too. All right. Yes, Prof. Final comments on that and the likelihood scenarios that are likely to crop out of the current status of their marriage. Well, um, it's broken. <laughs> that one is very clear. But I think um, for the president, you may want to follow <coughs> his biological father's uh, strategy. The one uh, the speaker was talking about. So you are on your own. I think uh, he needs to adopt that. Uh, whoever wants to be president, go and appeal to the people. Uh, it may be difficult for him to do that, given that there are a lot of people who claim to speak for him. Eh? Because uh, whenever they speak, some of them emit wrong signals. So he has a big task, a big job, how to balance these things so that we have a smooth transition when the time comes okay. with, uh, <coughs> with no ill feeling on, the, on either side or the other side. Um, whoever becomes president, whether it is Reira or Ruto, or perchance I'm able to somebody else. Okay. Um, we, I think there will be some serious questions coming up. Uh, Reira has already said repeatedly, we have to look at this land issue. Um, and what Ruto has done is to steal from Reira, steal, the, the class. Mm -hmm. Class yeah, because the Raila used to be the champion of the underclass. Yes, of course. And, and, okay. and then the Ruto just comes from nowhere and he takes it away. Okay. And we'll, we look forward to how this is going to be unfolding in the next couple of months as the country preps up for the 2022 elections. And Honorable Fana Malin, the former Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, thank you, your time is appreciated. Prof, thank you. Mashari Amunene. Thank you. He is commentator on social political development. And thank you to you too for watching the broadcast. We'll see you tomorrow morning at the same time for the Youth Culture Week as we hear from the young voices in the country. Good afternoon. LifeServe Pharmacy is a healthcare provider for genuine medicine. Our main branch is located at Rubis Toll Station, Sabaki, Athi River on Mombasa Road. Our top value is convenient healthcare and dispensing quality prescriptions at the best value proposition. Our main attention spans around providing quality medicine and excellent services to our customers. We're giving 10% discounts on all supplements, hypertension and diabetic drugs. We also believe you shouldn't pay too much to stay healthy and that's why we'll match any advertised price on prescriptions and medicines. LifeServe Pharmacy is a healthcare provider with a human touch.